So All right. let me turn that off. Okay. Cool. I think we're recording. Um, so my name is Heidi Sloan. I organize with Austin DSA and with the Homes Not Handcuffs Coalition. Yeah, and hi, I'm Chris Harris with Homes Not Handcuffs as well as with Texas Appleseed. And um, we are really grateful for anyone who is watching this today. We thought that it would be helpful to talk a little bit about what's coming up in the world of homeless decriminalization and housing and um, what we're hoping to accomplish this week as in also in the coming months. Um, and so just a little bit about Homes Not Handcuffs, um, the coalition that we're both part of is a group of advocates and allies and folks directly impacted by criminalization. Um, we've been fighting to decriminalize homelessness because we believe in freedom for all of our neighbors. Um, and we know that the unjust application of the law, laws specifically written to target people experiencing homelessness um, and the impact of the carceral state have long-term dehumanizing effects. Uh, we know also that people who are homeless, who have greater agency, who can choose where and how they live, are better able to connect to services. So we've been in this fight for a while now, um, and I wanted to see, Chris, if you will catch us up on the last few years of the decriminalization effort. Sure. So I was um, with a group uh, at the time called Grassroots Leadership. This is November of 2017, uh, Big Up Grassroots. Um, and um, when, a, when a group called Gathering Ground Theater made up of current and formerly uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, approached us uh, to help them with a campaign they were hoping to run. And so they had a play coming up uh, and they do theater of the oppressed style shows. Uh, and that play was called No Sit, No Lie, uh, named after one of three local ordinances uh, that criminalized homelessness. Uh, in that case, as you can imagine, sitting and lying down uh, in, a, in a wide swath of, of the city at that time was against the law. But as, as Heidi, you alluded to, it wasn't against the law for everyone. We know that it was only being enforced against people uh, that were unhoused. Um, and Around the same time, the city auditor came out with a report uh, that explained that not just this law, but also a uh, local ordinance that criminalized uh, camping, uh, which is really any sort of sleeping outside, as well as solicitation or panhandling or flying a sign as it's called, uh, were also problematic, counterproductive, and potentially illegal, and, and recommended that the city uh, actually make changes to those ordinances. And so, um, at that moment, we, we launched an effort uh, together with Gathering Down Theater, and we picked up many partners along the way uh, to, to try to uh, decriminalize homelessness, really to get rid of these ordinances to ensure that people weren't criminalized simply because they had nowhere else to go. And um, it took a long time. Uh, we spent you know over 18 months, I believe, ultimately on that campaign uh, through many actions, many <laughs> different forms of advocacy. Uh, and in June of 2019, uh, we finally were successful in, in not repealing those ordinances, but making them change such that we now see virtually no tickets, no arrests uh, for, for these offenses. Uh, of course, it's also increased the visibility of homelessness quite a bit, right? Because now uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, can't be you know, run off by the police or ticketed or even arrested uh, simply for sitting or lying or camping. Um, and so uh, that, of course, has also driven sort of a backlash, uh, a backlash which really we still find ourselves in uh, and kind of defines the current moment and, and, and what we need to keep, uh, keep working on. Yeah, definitely. And, and not backlash that we haven't met before. This mm -hmm. is, uh, I don't know how many go rounds we've had so far of council members bringing up similar type of initiatives. Um, the most recent changes to the policy itself were in, I believe, October of 2019, uh, where council deemed it necessary to make sure that they restricted camping to places that are not um, public health and safety hazards. So that's on the books and that's sort of where we've left it. 
um, through the political season that has been more recent, but, but here we are again. And in all of this work, our, our focus as a coalition really has been on decriminalization and getting people away from those, those harsh side effects of being targeted by politicians and by the police. Um, but as the other half of our sort of coalition name, Homes Not Handcuffs, implies, we know that homes are just as important as liberty in this situation, people's ability to survive and thrive, to heal and to manage their lives. Um, but as everyone on this call and most people in Austin would agree, uh, the lack of affordable housing in our city is just incredibly widely and deeply felt, um, especially the housing that is for the zero to 30% income rate where, where most of our neighbors experiencing homelessness or maybe even all fall. Um, that doesn't exist. It very rarely comes up in approval from council and public-private partnerships. The NIMBYism is strong against initiatives like that. And supportive housing is also really hard to come by. Service providers are you know, constantly working to find more ways of instituting supportive housing, but it's, it's still just really lacking behind, especially in a year like this, where we're seeing um, the causes of homelessness and the pressure on the economy and on people's personal finances push more and more people into homelessness. The market is just not keeping up. Um, Fortunately, as Chris said, decriminalization has this side effect of making homelessness more visible. And that could be seen as a, a negative, but honestly, it makes Austinites just have this issue on their mind, even if they themselves are not directly impacted. And what we've seen is that our housed neighbors are putting more and more pressure on our city and our service providers and even the private sector to look toward housing as a solution, which is what we want. You know, we don't want it to come in, in, in forms of attacking people who are living out, but we do want it to come in forms of um, disgruntled neighbors saying that this is not acceptable, that people shouldn't be treated that way and calling their council members and getting them to do something about it. And there are actually some positive things that are happening even right now. Um, Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about what we see specifically like happening recently or or um, shortly in on, on the horizon for us here in Austin? Sure. Well, you know, I think there has been an investment into the issue of homelessness that's been unprecedented here in the last couple of years. Um, and I think there's no question that's directly tied to the increased visibility of homelessness that's come about because of decriminalization. Now, ultimately, that investment will only pay off to the extent that it actually provides housing um, and you know people uh, obviously that are unhoused um, still you know benefit from uh, service and and require services that are that are useful and and good investments to make but ultimately people um, you know won't achieve what <laughs> they need to achieve as far as self-sufficiency as far as safety as far as health uh, even if they're being served, if they're not also being housed. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's really, really, um, the, that is ultimately the sign of progress. And, and luckily we've had a very recent sign. So last week we had uh, the first of two, hopefully, uh, uh, hotels approved for permanent supportive housing. And this is housing that specifically uh, designed for people who are chronically unhoused, meaning that they've been unhoused for a, a longer period of time and typically require uh, additional services in order to ultimately, you know, potentially get back uh, uh, into some form of self-sufficiency. And, um, and there's another hotel purchase that is up this week uh, on Thursday, uh, item 61, that we're very much in support of and that we hope passes. Cumulatively, this will help one, almost 150 of, again, our, our most chronically unhoused and in need neighbors um, actually get both housing and wraparound services that's, that's so essential. Um, and that's on top of um, you know, another hotel purchase that happened uh, uh, before the pandemic. Uh, as well as, you know, I would say some some additional, um, uh, you know, housing efforts that have come from people being, uh, you know, placed in kind of temporary uh, lodging 
uh, because of their vulnerability to the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And so, you know, we've seen another, you know, 150-ish folks housed out of those pro-lodges. Um, and, and, you know, due to ongoing advocacy and organizing, uh, we've seen that, you know, those pro-lodges and, and the people that are in them uh, will continue to, to be able to stay in them. Uh, and we're going to continue to press that they get to stay in them until they are connected with more long-term housing. Um, and so, so there are positives, um, and and we hope to see additional positives uh, again come from it. And you know, I think it's very much a testament to you know, you know, what what the you know the goal of criminalization was, which wasn't to address homelessness because we all know that you're not going to solve homelessness by putting homeless people into jails. You're not going to solve homelessness by giving unhoused people tickets and warrants and setting them back to where they, they can't even get jobs and housing in the future. Um, all you're going to do with criminalization is you're going to hide the problem. And if you hide the problem, then what is the political will going to be to actually fix it? Well, we saw, we saw in the years and years where there was no new shelter provided, very little housing created. Um, but now in these, you know, not even two years of, of decriminalization, we've seen these amazing investments. So, you know, it's, um, it's not the solution to homelessness, decriminalization by any stretch. Homes are the solution. Uh, but it is part of the solution because it's it's really one it's enabling folks to 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 be safer and to live in in slightly better conditions than they may have before and of course not face the constant threat of of being criminalized but it's also really putting a spotlight on the issue and enabling uh you know and, and really forcing uh politicians to to face the issue and to and to try to address it that's right. And I just, uh, yeah, I want to reemphasize that replacing the entirety of the social safety net with the carceral state hasn't worked. And we know that that is the case. Um, it didn't work when homelessness was criminalized and it doesn't work now. And so we are looking actively towards real solutions and honestly finding ourselves in like situations with unlikely bedfellows with people who are also not wanting to face the reality that, that folks are forced to camp here in Austin. Um, so coming up, really important and kind of yet to be determined. I think we can shape this how we want it, but there's a summit led by ECHO, which is one of our largest service providers, um, definitely the largest service provider that the city interacts with uh, around homelessness. This summit is bringing all kinds of folks to the table um, to really look at solutions to really look at service options, to really take a look at housing. And I think that we can shape that conversation to make the focus on long-term housing, on actually providing that, that infrastructure. Unfortunately, right now, <laughs> the reason for this call is that there are several threats to that ongoing process, towards that, to that momentum towards home, home building and homecoming. Um, we have a right-wing governor threatening once again to take control from cities and municipalities choosing what works for their citizens. Um, we have this incredibly horrible and deceptive ballot measure coming up from Save Austin Now in May, which would recriminalize not just camping, but also panhandling and sitting and lying in public, which as we know are all um, behaviors associated with homelessness. And what we really want to narrow in on, on is that this Thursday, um, really urgent action item. City Council has an initiative being voted on called the HEAL initiative. And for us in the coalition, as well as a lot of community members that we've spoken to, we consider this a backdoor to recriminalization, disguised as pretty unclear and largely incoherent plans to house people who are camping now. So Chris, will you just take us through a little bit of like our brief summary of, about what item 49 on the agenda for this Thursday, the HEAL initiative is and, and what our issues as a coalition are that we found with it? Sure, yeah, well, and, you know, I think to, to reiterate your point, you know, I think there's, <laughs> there's two kind of threats now to the progress that's been made. And one is the very overt kind of, you know, anti-homelessness, which, you know, they'll they'll lie about its true intent. But when you look in, into the details, it's very clear. It's about criminalizing the existence of people experiencing homelessness to once again disappear those people and the perceived problem. 
And, and then there's the threat of the something very, very similar, but it being wrapped in uh, language of, of, of trying to help and even being attached to funding for housing, right? So, and that's, and that's what we're seeing with the current version of the YIELD initiative that's on the agenda right now. So what it would do is it would actually um, kind of upend how uh, the city prioritizes housing for people experiencing homelessness, rather than it being based on your need and your score on the, what's called a coordinated assessment. It would actually, uh, it would cr create a fund of money, uh, a very insufficient fund uh, to start with, that would house folks based on where they camp. So it would be location-based. And it would say that we're going to approach people in these areas and we're going to either house or shelter them, kind of unclear. And then once we've reached, we've completed that phase at this location, unclear what complete means, we will then uh, recriminalize camping in that location. And while the initiative is, is set up to be based around health and safety, and that's what's driving their efforts, uh, what we see when we look at it is that um, each of the sponsors of this resolution has has really, for the most part, just picked you know maybe the most you know uh, uh, visible uh, uh, camp or encampment in their district and said that this is the target because it's unsafe. Um, and so what it really appears to be is a complaint-driven housing prioritization scheme that isn't sufficient to house folks, doesn't actually promise to house folks and then will lead to criminalization on the backside of it. So, um, you know, obviously we're very much opposed to anything that's going to recriminalize, but we obviously also support new investments, assuming that they are new investments uh, into housing. Um, uh, so, you know, at this stage, what we're really hoping for is that, um, you know, if they're able to remove entirely the threat of criminalization, by all means, you know, allocate new funding. That said, we think this effort should be postponed so that one, the they can get input from people that are directly impacted about how all this would work. Uh, and, and obviously make sure that those folks that would face the consequences of this are aware of and have input into uh, what's coming. And two, because of this summit that you mentioned that echoes leading, I mean, this is uh, promises, uh, holds the promise of actually putting together not just a, a more comprehensive plan to address this issue than the city's ever seen, but also to bring resources, especially from the private sector to bear um, that could, could really actually <laughs> help address the lack of housing that we have. And so, um, you know, for us, it, it's really the wrong time to be considering new proposals uh, and new schemes uh, of, about how to house folks uh, when this summit is, is literally supposed to happen now this month here in February. Yeah, that's right. And and just to, to put sort of like a head on it, um, if you can imagine this initiative passing before that summit takes place, it really could take the wind out of the sails of some of these potential funders and partners across the city who would just be as happy to to recriminalize if that option was on the table you know you imagine mm -hmm. maybe groups representing like the downtown area who could really bring funding and who could really be um, pushed to focus on solutions suddenly just being completely derailed by this possibility and and really playing into the hands of the save austin now group and and into the hands of governor abbott so we want to be really clear with council that um, we want a postponement, but if they're not willing to postpone this item, then we want them to vote against any form of the resolution that re recriminalizes camping in Austin. We can't necessarily anticipate how <laughs> this process is going to go, whether we can get postponement, whether there will be amendments um, made and upheld, but we can say our line is no form of this resolution should be passed that includes recriminalization. Um, and the reason for that, I think is pretty self-evident, but if you need a talking point, if you wanna really drive it home or make it short, one minute is not a long time for you to talk with city council. It's always a problem for us. It's not the most democratic. We manage to make meetings awfully long sometimes anyway, but 
you know, what we talk about and, and what we would want you to really hone in on is the fact that the, this resolution is not about creating health and safety. There are already existing ordinances on the books that recommend and require that. This is about hiding people experiencing homelessness. This is about making a problem that is inconvenient for some council members disappear. And that this resolution is designed to justify sweeping those focus areas, those priority camps that they're identifying and offering services or housing or, or something to the people living there. This resolution is designed to say that once they're done with that initiative, they have the ability to come in and sweep those camps. Anyone who's left, anyone who has moved in since that time, any new people who might find that the right area for them to be camping in the future, this is eliminating that as a possibility um, and putting you know, our unhoused neighbors in the direct harm that comes with those sweeps, which is something that we absolutely know the outcomes of. We saw it downtown with the guided path program. We've seen it all across Austin as, as camps have been um, disheveled and, and folks forced to move at, at the drop of a hat. So um, this resolution is coming up Thursday, <laughs> this yeah. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, two things on Thursday. Uh, so item 61, new hotel, permanent supportive housing, we're in favor. Uh, and, and obviously, please let your council member and the mayor know about that, as well as, you know, register in favor of it. Uh, and then item 49, we again are pushing for postponement. Uh, so item 49, a postponement and, and definitely, again, your council member and mayor uh, need to hear from you. Uh, and it would be great if you could register uh, as well uh, on Thursday uh, on those items. So we're gonna make this uh, conversation <laughs> shareable. So you can send it to all of the folks in your network um, to just give a little bit of background and context into language that is meant to be opaque and, and not recognizable to the general public. Fortunately, some of us follow it obsessively, so here we are. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then please uh, share it as you can. Follow Homes Not Handcuffs on your social media. Um, share from there so that we keep driving people back to the most updated versions of this information. Thursday is a huge day, but so are the next few months. Um, the, we are in the middle of shifting Austin's public sentiment about homelessness. That's what could happen right now. I think that's what we're on the verge of, and that's why we're getting so much pushback. And it's up to us to demand a way forward without criminalization, without handcuffs, without sweeps, and for always with the orientation for housing. If we can make this conversation about that, about housing, we get an edge up, not just on this Thursday, but also in May, we change the conversation and we get Governor Abbott off our back interfering because Austin will be with us. And, and now is the time to make that happen. So thanks for joining me, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. This is great.